Ken Clark, former Tory Chancellor, and uh, it seems we have the picture. Good to see you. And uh, I was just asking uh, Lord Clark what you make of the mess uh, of the mess we appear to be in. Well, I, you know, what I, <laughs> my feelings are what everybody would expect to be. I, I must admit, I've never known a budget uh, cause a financial crisis immediately like this. I, when I listened to the budget, I was rather astounded by its contents, uh, and uh, I hope we very rapidly get out of it. I, I, I was uh, hoping that now we'd gone through the circus of the leadership election, we were now going to get down to dealing with a serious national crisis, and I was... Uh, quite prepared to give them time and wish them success in the national interest. But they have made a catastrophic start. The, 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 the budget was a serious mistake and it has caused uh, a, a serious problem. Right, so the, the government is blaming international factors. I mean, you believe this is quite clearly a self-inflicted crisis? Well, it's an additional crisis. Uh, of course, they're right that they've taken over at a time when they have a lot of very serious problems to deal with. And economically, they have a very unusual combination. Uh, Britain is entering into a recession. We're in a recession now. Uh, but this recession is being combined with high inflation. Inflation probably usually doesn't occur in recessions. Uh, inflation is more often when you're in some sort of inflationary boom that has to be quietened down. But they've got an inflationary recession. Uh, and the budget was put forward in the apparently naive belief that firstly they had to deliver tax cuts so that would get them a good headline the next day and that if you gave tax cuts to the very rich that, that you would attack really good bankers to London that would get us back to growth and it would trickle down to everybody else well uh, I hope that's all been torn up and that they're now sitting down listening to the Treasury the Bank of England and those serious economists so I'm sure are happy to give them proper advice but we've just been hearing from the uh, Treasury Minister saying uh, these are the right plans because they, might, they make our economy more competitive. We will get on and deliver these plans. I didn't know that. I, I, I was uh, not sharing the criticism of their silence at the moment because I very much hope that they were sitting down carefully and taking proper advice and considering very carefully what they were going to say before they came out and responded. Uh, and um, that, that's, uh, I, 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 I think that is a great pity. What we needed was a clear statement that they would stick to fiscal discipline, that, of course, the problems of inflation were caused by President Putin and also by other real problems in supply problems and food supplies uh, throughout the world. They couldn't cure it straight away, but they were going to combine, in a sensible, prudent way, getting down inflation with bringing uh, to an end the recession, lessening the recession, getting us back to growth. They'll be re-elected in two years' time if they're judged by then to be competent. People will forgive them some mistakes, so this isn't quite Black Wednesday, I don't think. But they, they, they've now got to demonstrate that they're responsibly heading out on the right course and actually you know, where they need to be in two years' time for the election is able to say to people, look, we were right, it worked out all right in the end. We're now beginning to get a bit of growth. We've got low inflation. We're back on course to become a good modern economy again because the British economy has a lot of underlying strengths. We're not some uh, third world country or some country that's usually in this sort of problem like Argentina or Greece. So it begs the question then, why do you think they proceeded in the way they did? We had Rishi Sunak, after all, warning that what would happen to the pound, what would happen to on the gilt <laughs> markets, what would happen to interest rates? Uh, I voted for Rishi Sunak, yes. No, I think, I think they've got too much political excitement and hype and hubris uh, after all the rather over-frantic, over-long debate in the leadership election, and they were plunged straight away to give effect to all the things they've been actually warned about by Rishi uh, and many others, uh, and they, they were mainly heading for the good headlines that they got in the Daily Mail 
And the Daily Express, the Daily Express gave them a glowing headline, at last a real Conservative budget. Well, I don't think any previous Conservative government, least of all Margaret Thatcher's, the most successful we've had since the war, would have done anything like this. Although uh, they did make a slight slip under uh, the Thatcher government, did we did in, in 1988. Well, that's the point. I mean, this is your party. This is the party that was known... Mm -hmm. Uh, for economic responsibility, or that's what they said they should be known for. Yes, which is why Black Wednesday did such terrible uh, uh, harm to us, uh, and quite lasting harm for quite a long time. Um, but uh, uh, we did get the economy back after Black Wednesday. Uh, Blair only got elected because, uh, by saying he was going to follow my economic policy, which he did for a couple of years. Uh, stick to my figures, if you recall, because the economy was the only thing we were in the lead in the polls on in 1997. We'd just torn ourselves apart and were continuing to do so with a stupid argument over Europe. Oh. Uh, but that, that, that we were quite unelectable. But, but the, the, the reason the Conservative Party has been the governing party for the majority uh, of my lifetime has been because it's always been regarded as safe for the money, good on the economy, much more reliable than the feckless Labour Party. Right. And just finally, what about the position of the Chancellor now? Do, I mean, does it all add up to a resigning matter, okay, do you think? Great. No, I, I, I like Kwesi Kwarteng. I mean, we can't keep having a different chance every other week. Uh, he's a good, intelligent guy. Uh, he, he's just got to stand up to Rishi or uh, stand up to the Prime Minister or the Prime Minister's advisers if they're the source of the problem. He, he's got to make a, a really serious statement that he is going to stick to fiscal discipline, that we are. It's going to be a long, difficult course with a difficult winter, but uh, and, and he, he has... Uh, got, got to make a reassuring statement. And the bank mustn't get left behind the curve again. Well, they, they, they're going to have to raise interest rates. They should have raised interest rates yesterday, in my opinion. Not by some panic, threatened large, huge sum, but another half a percent just to show they are independent and doing their proper job. And uh, both of them need to come out with serious, solid statements. The government and the bank and not just say, they'll let us all know in November. Uh, we need a restatement of policy. And then, personally, uh, I like Kwesi Kwarteng. Uh, I wish him well. He's a highly intelligent guy. Uh, just uh, learn from this, settle down, get some calm back, and uh, start pursuing a more serious and responsible policy. OK. Uh, Lord Clark, I appreciate you coming on the programme. Thanks very much indeed. Pleasure.